Welcome to Typology and Prophecy. My name is Kyle. This is a podcast dedicated to the study of the Bible through the methodology of typology. How would you like to celebrate Christmas all year round? What if I told you there was a biblical way to do just that? Now before I tell you what that is, let's first establish one thing. And I know it's a bit cliche at this point, but it's still very true. And that is, Jesus is the reason for the season. Now of course, this truth can easily get lost in the midst of living in a modernist and overly commercialized world. If you listen only to the media, Christmas is nothing more than Black Friday kicking off the greatest period of economic buying and selling that happens all year long. Forget about talking about the tragedy of sin and death, or how Jesus came to save us from them. Oh no, the real tragedy is if corporate profits don't hit their year-end targets by showing at least a 10% increase in year-over-year consumer spending. And of course, let's not forget about how Christ has been replaced entirely by Santa and reindeers and who's on the naughty or nice list. Look, let's face it, our modern world has lost sight of the fact that Christmas is a celebration of Christ's birth. Now, of course, I'm aware that December 25th is not really the day that Jesus was born. And I'm familiar with the pagan origins of the use of the date. But that detail is really irrelevant to the fact that Jesus was, in fact, born. And that truth, irregardless of what day of the year that happened on, is what we celebrate. The importance of Christ's birth should be celebrated on December 25th, and in my humble opinion, should be celebrated every other day of the year as well. Now, of course, when I say that, I'm not suggesting that the lights and the decorations should stay up all year round. I'm not suggesting that the Hallmark Channel show only Christmas movies all 12 months out of the year. No, what I'm suggesting is that the miracle that happened at Christ's birth is something that we should celebrate in our hearts all year long. So what exactly is this miracle that happened at Christ's birth? It's described in the Gospel of Matthew this way. In chapter 1, starting in verse 20, we read, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So there it is. This is the miracle of Christmas that we should and can be celebrated all year round. It is the miracle of the Incarnation, which refers to the act of God becoming a man. On that night in Bethlehem when baby Jesus was born and he breathed in his first breath, that was the first breath taken by God in the flesh. Jesus was not merely a good person. He was not merely a wise teacher. He was not even merely just a prophet. No, Jesus was God incarnate. The Apostle John opens his gospel with a reference to this very truth. He wrote in John 1.1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14 he adds, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. When we celebrate Christmas, what we are really celebrating is the fact that God became a man. Now to the opening question, how can we biblically celebrate Christmas all year round? The answer is by celebrating the Incarnation, which we do so by partaking of the bread of communion. 
At the Lord's Supper, it says in Matthew 26, 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. The bread of the new covenant that we partake of in communion, this represents the same thing that we celebrate at Christmas, which is that God became a man so that we could be saved from our sins. So this Christmas, I encourage you, set aside some time to contemplate the real meaning of the season, to contemplate the greatest gift ever given in heaven or on earth, which is for God to become flesh and dwell among us. And the next time you partake of the bread and the wine of communion, I encourage you to remember Christ's birth, which is where it began the incarnation that is symbolized by the bread. Well, that will do it for this episode of Typology and Prophecy. To everyone, have a Merry Christmas and God bless.